So feeding kids is a colossal task that no one prepares you for. At least I was not prepared for it. Kids have basically zero patience. They all have unique eating habits and they are constantly growing, which means they need a ton of food. And as far as appliances and tools go, the air fryer has by far unlocked the most success in my household in really achieving the goal of feeding my kids as much homemade food as possible. And today I'm not only gonna tell you the five reasons for that success, but also give you basically every single recipe my kids love that is made in the air fryer. Now the number one reason I love air fryers when making food for kids are the creative snacks and meals that you can pump out in these things. Because this right here is basically a little package of convection power and we can harness it to make some pretty fun stuff. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is a grilled cheese that I love making, which uses this uncrustable mold basically to make little sandwich pockets. And you're gonna wanna use some softer bread. I'm using a soft white sourdough here and then some type of melting cheese. It really does doesn't matter. I'm using both cheddar and provolone. So what I do is I shred up some of that cheese and then I'll take the big cutter, I cut out the base sandwich shape on two pieces. And then I'll take the smallest mold to put in the cheese in the perfect position. And then I'll close that up and use the sealer mold to press down and create this beautiful little uncrustable pocket. But since it's a grilled cheese, it needs to be grilled or cooked. And this shape would be very hard to cook in a pan, which is why the air fryer is great. I'll just throw that in there. And instead of trying to butter this whole thing up, I just spray it down with some oil. I'm using coconut oil here and cook it for about five minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'll flip it over, cook it for a few minutes on the other side. So the entire thing is just perfectly golden brown and crispy. This I found is just a fun way to switch things up and keep things interesting. Mmm, the cheese is good. I love that grilled cheese sandwich. Now my kids personally could probably survive off just eating fruit. And in all forms, fresh fruit, dehydrated, freeze dried. One of the reasons why I'm very anxious for all these fruit trees to start producing in my yard. That is a long-term investment to hopefully shave off the grocery bill from all this fruit I'm buying. But one thing I love doing in the air fryer is dehydrating fruit. And I've got a big clunky dehydrator in the basement. You've seen that come up in a lot of different food projects, but I'm using that for bigger batches of things. And the cool thing about a lot of these new air fryers is they have a bigger temperature range and they can go down a lot lower to the point where you can actually properly dehydrate food. And sometimes I'm in the mood to just make a smaller batch of dehydrated fruit for my kids. And my favorite two things to dehydrate are apples and bananas. And I'll take a paring knife to core out the apples since I don't have a proper apple corer in this studio. And then I'll just slice them up to make these apple rings. And then the banana is really simple. I'll just cut them on a bias to make these little bite-sized pieces. And the key to getting your money's worth with dehydrating in the air fryer is adding some racks. And my brother first told me about these. These are just a great air fryer accessory in general that add a bunch of surface area because what you can do is stack food. And that's what I'm gonna do. I will stack all of the fruit on these racks, including the bottom rack of the air fryer. And then I'll throw that in the air fryer. I'll hit the dehydrate preset, which on this air fryer is 135 degrees for six hours. And I've tested this time and temperature many times and it's perfect because these things come out and they're not super crispy. If you want like an actual apple or banana chip, I would say go another four or five hours. But if you just want a super flavorful dehydrated snack that's got a little bit of chew and a little bit of crisp, these are absolutely perfect. Now, another snack my kids love is anything crunchy or puff. We're talking all of these different brands that make like a Cheeto alternative or just like a crunchy rice cracker. And there's a rice cracker you can make in the air fryer that's really simple to make and super delicious. And all you need is a package of rice papers, which you can find pretty much in any supermarket these days. And I'll take out two sheets and I'll quickly saturate them in water. You don't want them absolutely drenched or they'll get too soggy and you won't be able to cut them properly. And I'll layer these together, which is very important to get the puff effect. And then after about 30 seconds to a minute, they'll start to soften a little bit to the point where you can make some slices in them. I'll take out the air fryer rack, spray it with a little oil so they don't stick, and I'll cut these in some thin strips, which to me is kind of the fastest way to do this. Layer on those strips, spray it with a little bit more oil, and then I'll hit these with a little bit of salt and sesame seeds, but feel free, of course, to get creative with the seasoning for these crackers. And I'll air fry those at 385 degrees for about six minutes until they 
come out just perfectly puffed up and extra crispy. You like them? And while we're on the topic of snacks, I do just wanna mention that my cookie game in the air fryer has been getting so strong. You saw this recipe come up in a recent video, but I have been tuning in and really getting an amazing cookie product in under 15 minutes, which is incredible. And for me, just being able to whip up like a super quick, small batch cookie in the air fryer just kind of lowers the threshold a little bit, which brings me right into reason two, which is the ability to make small batches of things in air fryers because Kids are very unpredictable with their eating habits. Sometimes they have big appetites, sometimes they have very small appetites. And I find that being able to just cook up a few things at a time in a small batch gives me more flexibility to bring food to the table that's fresh, that they'll actually enjoy. Take for example, these delicious sweet potato turkey meatballs that I found from Yummy Toddler Food, which is a great resource for cooking for little kids. Big shout out to our recipes and also more importantly for just keeping it real. These meatballs just have a few ingredients and they're super easy to whip up. First thing I do is I'll add some ground turkey to the mix. I'm using white meat here, but you can use dark meat as well. I've got one egg, a little bit of maple syrup, just to increase the sweetness a little bit, some breadcrumbs, and I'll peel a small sweet potato and grate that up right into the mix. And then finally, I just season these up with salt and then I'll mix it all together and you've got your meatball mix and I'll pack this into a food container. And rather than sitting there rolling out a bunch of meatballs, cooking them all at one time, which personally for me in the kitchen, and not that this is a big batch of meatballs, but I don't like repetition. Too much of any one thing just gets very boring for me. Plus this is a white meat, so you wanna cook it to perfection. So I'll just take out that container when I'm ready to make some meatballs for dinner and just put like five or six in there, whatever I need for that single meal. Cook them up in like six, seven minutes and you've got these perfectly fresh and juicy meatballs. And that will stay fresh for a few days so you can just cook them up whenever you need them. Whoa, slow down. <laughs> Another great example are chicken fingers, which I have mastered in the air fryer at this point and my kids love them. This is a three part breading and I use half corn flakes that are ground up and half breadcrumbs. To me, this is kind of like the almighty holy grail of breadings for chicken fingers. That resembles the closest thing to the chicken finger that I grew up on when I was a kid. But anyone who has made a chicken finger or chicken nugget from scratch with chicken breast knows that they dry out very quickly. So I like throwing these in a container and just just cooking up exactly what I would need for dinner, which could be just a few pieces of chicken at a time and you tune into the temp so they come out just perfectly juicy and tender so your kids actually like them. So before we move on, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is Kasori and their new Turbo Blaze air fryer, which is not only the air fryer I've been featuring throughout this entire video, but this is my new go-to air fryer of choice because it's an absolute beast. As most of you air fryer fans know, I have been using Kasori air fryers for years now. And what I really love about their brand is their continual innovation in design, functionality, and performance, which has really helped to take air fryers out of the dark ages from many years ago when I started using them into this new home cooking space where this air fryer has a permanent space on my counter. Now this new Turbo Blaze is an absolute workhorse. For me, this six quart size really hits the sweet spot for my personal family needs, which is a family of four. And what's really nice is depending on the selected mode, it will actually shift into different fan speeds to create the perfect convection environment, ranging all the way down from 95 degrees to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an extremely wide range for air frying. But as you've seen, we can take advantage of that range to produce a beautiful variety of different dishes. So if you're interested in the Turbo Blaze, click the link below and use code word PROHOMECOOKS10 for 10% off your purchase. And one of the biggest advancements with this air fryer and the reason it's called the Turbo Blaze is the new dynamic DC motor, which can cook your food up to 45% faster, which we're gonna put to the test right now because reason number three is the speed of air fryers because kids <laughs> have zero patience. Every parent knows that. Waiting for things is not something they're good at. So one of the most dramatic shifts for me in the kitchen is just the speed 
speed I need to produce food. And air fryers are incredible at producing food quickly. And to prove my point, I'm gonna time the process it takes to make some sweet potato fries, which is by far the most made food coming out of my air fryer because my kids are obsessed. So I'm gonna hit the preheat button here just to give me a little head start since we're actually timing this. But in real life, I rarely use the preheat button since air fryers heat up so fast. And I'm gonna peel two medium-sized sweet potatoes, which is the perfect amount for this six quart air fryer. Then I'll slice them right in half and then I'll make slices in one direction, turn the sweet potato, make slices in the other direction and you get these nice little thick cut fries. Then I'll pop them in a bowl, hit them with some oil to coat and a little bit of salt. And I'll make sure that oil is nicely coating every sweet potato and pop those in the air fryer, which takes all in all about two minutes for that prep. I'm gonna air fry these at 385, we'll start with 10 minutes. And that was just about three minutes for prep. All right, 12 minutes in, we've been cooking for about 10 minutes and we're getting there. Quick shake, probably need five more minutes. All right, so we are just at 16 minutes. Boom. You could go a few more minutes to get them crispier, but for my kids, these are perfect. Some are slightly more brown than the others, which is fine. They're perfectly cooked through with a nice little crispy exterior. So 16 minutes air fryer in the last time trials I did for cauliflower it was 45 minutes in the oven. Maybe if your oven's super powerful, you could cut that by like five minutes. And for me, I'm making these sweet potato fries a few times a week for my kids, but also my wife and I. So 16 minutes minutes start to finish, delicious final product is unbeatable in my opinion. So next up is the air fryer's ability to reheat frozen or pre-made food, which every parent knows can be essential, at least at some points to get food on the table for kids. And trust me, I'm no superhero. I showed you how to make fresh nuggets in the air fryer, but I generally have a bag of frozen nuggets in my freezer that I call on when I'm super busy and I haven't had the time to meal prep food. And these nuggets specifically on the back of the package actually have air fryer instruction, which is pretty cool to see. And I guarantee wasn't the case like five years ago when I started making air fryer videos. And in my opinion, an air fryer is the absolute best appliance at reheating this food category. It's quick, it's energy efficient, and you get great crispy results. Another great frozen food that I make all the time in the air fryer. And this is another idea that came from Yummy Toddler Food, which is using a bag of frozen broccoli that's already cut up in the florets. I'll add these right to the air fryer basket. I'll give them a spray of some oil. I also add just a little bit of reserve chicken fat that I added as well. And then I'll season them up with salt, give them a shake, and I'll pop them in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes. And after they get a little bit of crispiness, I'll take them out of the air fryer, grate on some Parmesan cheese. You can of course use any cheese you want and throw them back in the air fryer for like an additional two minutes. And why this works so well for kids is that as the broccoli defrosts in the air fryer, it initially gets a nice steaming, which really softens the broccoli. And then it goes through that crispy stage. So the final result is a little bit of a soft softer texture while still having a lot of flavor and that crispy exterior, which I find personally for my kids is a more enjoyable texture than actually roasting these from a fresh head of broccoli. Now the first four points were all about cooking for your kids, but my last point is about cooking with your kids. Now my daughter is just about four years old and she is just starting to show interest in cooking for the first time, which is awesome. <laughs> Now, before I get into this last point, I just want to say that air fryers are very powerful machines. They can get very hot. And if you're cooking with a kid and they're using an air fryer, they should be monitored at all times. But having said that, I do think it's easier for a kid to use an air fryer and safer than say using a full powered oven. So the other night I went around my garden, I picked a bunch of kale, which is basically the only fresh thing available at this time of year. And I thought it'd be fun to do a little family cooking session. So we made some kale chips. We first ripped up the bigger pieces of kale and got everything in a bowl. What are we gonna do next, Papa? Then we added a little bit of olive oil. Then to season, I have this popcorn spice that I made that has nutritional yeast in it with some other spices that I thought would go really well on the kale chips. So we sprinkled that in and then we massaged that into the kale. Okay, now we're gonna dump. Whoa. Now hit the play button, see it? Play button? It's this one. You did it. Yeah. And this goes in the air fryer at around 350 to 360 degrees for about five minutes to start. And then after five minutes, I turned the temperature down to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit and cooked it for an additional 10 minutes to dry it out and get it nice and crispy. Ready. 
And what I love about this is that with supervision, my kids can be involved in the entire cooking process because all they're doing is handling the food or touching a plastic handle with a button. And then they're just pressing some digital buttons on the air fryer, which is kind of fun. Which if I'm making kale chips, say in an oven, I'm not letting them at this point reach into the oven. And I would say as a kid, having that connection to the entire process, really making something from start to finish, is pretty damn cool as a kid and a great gateway into cooking. And I've talked to a lot of other parents who have older kids, I'm not there yet, and they use the air fryer completely on their own. Again, I'm not there yet, so I can't recommend that, but it's just another cool element about air fryers. Do you like, can you say kale chip? <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Click right here if you want more air frying content.